Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Senior English B. And we now turn in our My Perspectives volume to pages 518, 519, Philip Larkin's The Explosion. Let's talk a little bit about Larkin on page 517. Notice his dates, 1922 to 1985. Born in Coventry, England, studies at the University of Oxford, published his first book of poetry in 1945. In 55, Larkin moved to Yorkshire to become a librarian at the University of Hull. During his lifetime, Larkin's poetry was renowned for its cold, deflating tone and anti-romantic themes. We're certainly going to see that in this text, The Explosion. Now, let's get some background information on 517. For centuries, Men have worked in coal mines, yes, picking with axes, it seems, of bitumen in order to earn enough to feed their families. Coal mines are dangerous places. We know something of this in Wyoming, right? And coal towns live in fear for their loved ones working thousands of feet below the ground. The workers know that they're in danger as they labor in the midst of the very elements, methane and coal dust, that can bring their lives to a sudden end. Let's go ahead now. We'll listen to professional reader, and then we'll ask some questions at levels one, two, and three. The Explosion by Philip Larkin. On the day of the explosion, shadows pointed towards the pithead. In the sun, the slag heap slept. Down the lane came men in pit boots, coughing oaf-edged talk and pipe smoke, shouldering off the freshening silence. One chased after rabbits, lost them, came back with a nest of lark's eggs, showed them, lodged them in the grasses. So they passed in beards and moleskins, fathers, brothers, nicknames, laughter through the tall gates standing open. At noon, there came a tremor. Cows stopped chewing for a second. Sun, scarfed as in a heat haze, dimmed. The dead go on before us. They are sitting in God's house in comfort. We shall see them face to face. Plain as lettering in the chapels, it was said. And for a second, wives saw men of the explosion. Larger than in life they managed. Gold as on a coin. Or walking somehow from the sun towards them. One showing the eggs unbroken. Now, of course, we're going to ask about the symbolism of the eggs at the conclusion of this poem, but let's, uh, first of all, just pay attention to the way that the poem is constructed at level 2B. Notice that we've got this sense of time. We begin on the day of the explosion, and then by lines uh, 13, 14, 15, we are at noon. And then we've got this interesting interlude that's italicized for us with some religious verse giving us some sense of maybe some words of comfort that can be spoken. And then we'll finish with the eggs. And notice as well the symbolism of the sun. And in fact, in almost every one of these stanzas, we'll either have something about sun or eggs to give us some sense of what's going on. Now, of course, let's put it in our notes right away. Larkin is trying to humanize for us the terrible experience of these work conditions and the horror, of course, of a collapsed mine or the explosion within a mine. So we will go, first of all, in the first opening stanzas with, on the day of the explosion, shadows pointed towards the pithead. Your, your, um, your footnotes here will help you. Of course, pithead, the entrance to the coal mine. Shadows pointing towards the pithead in the sun, the slag heap, that is to say the large amount of waste material dug up from a coal mine, slept. In other words, at the beginning of the day, everything looks fairly routine. And we've got men coming down the lane in pit boots, coughing, oath-edged talk, and pipe smoke, shouldering off the freshened silence. In other words, we're in the early morning hour, the men are very normal. How normal? The third stanza, one chased after rabbits, lost them, came back with a nest of lark's eggs. Of course, these eggs 
are going to be for us significant. Show them. Lodge them in the grasses. Let's make a 2B observation. Notice it's lost them, showed them, right? The, 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 uh, the punctuated language is going to help us as we move towards, obviously, the explosion. By line 10, we're, we're trying to understand them as humane, right? So they passed in beards and moleskins, the garments, of course, the heavy cloth garments that they wear. Uh, fathers, brothers, nicknames, laughter, almost a Whitman-esque line, yes? Through the tall gates standing open. Now these tall gates standing open, a symbol, of course, possibly of the notion of the gates of heaven. And then the palm shifts. At noon, there came a tremor. Cows stopped chewing for a second. Notice all the references to nature, right? We've got rabbits, we've got eggs, now we've got cows. Stop chewing for a second. It's almost as if nature knew something was going on. Back to sun. Sun scarfed as in a heat haze, dimmed. That is to say, something went away. Something changed, fundamentally changed. Then they italicized, the dead go on before us, they're sitting in God's house in comfort, we shall see them face to face. This, of course, religious language of comfort that is spoken at a, at a funeral, right? Then back to the poem itself at line 19, plain as lettering in the chapels. And then it was said, is a reflection on what's said after the fact. And for a second, wives saw men of the explosion larger than in life they managed. And then the and then the, 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 the dash, gold as on a coin, or walking somehow from the sun towards them, the explosion obviously enhancing the way they look, one showing the eggs unbroken. In other words, at the very moment when these men were walking through the gate, one of them had, uh, you know, had the lark's eggs, that's when the explosion happens. In other words, it's completely unplanned in every way. Let's jump to 2A. Obviously, we have some major messages here. One is that life happens and the suffering of life happens tragically so regularly when we're not prepared at all for it. When life is going, uh, as, uh, as Auden will say in uh, UC DeGuard's, dully along. And then all of a sudden, tragedy, tragedy hits. And to me, we've mentioned already the power of nature versus something unnatural in this explosion. At 3A, we can ask any number of titles that come to mind that play the same game of recognizing how tragedy will happen in moments when one is not really expecting it at all. I mentioned UC DBR, it's Auden's classic. We, you can write down what for you um, are the titles that come to mind. Maybe they're films that speak of the same kind of thing. In other words, at the moment when everything seems to be going just fine, there's some kind of trauma that will happen. And then finally at 3B, what are your thoughts about how to deal with trauma and the ways in which life's pain and suffering seems to come along at the most inopportune of moments, the most unexpected of moments. It's a time in your life when this happened for you, and then how did you deal with it? I hope that your study of the explosion will lead you to more of the great Philip Larkins and his, uh, and his poetry. Thank you.